Hey, real estate photographers. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a topic that is sure to generate lots of discussion, and that's free to fee. This is a popular lead strategy that has been promoted by a lot of influencers out there, and it is even used by some professionals. I also find that beginners love hearing this strategy because it gives them permission to go ahead and get out there before perhaps they're really ready to be out there. That being said, because I have you and your career's best interest in mind, I am not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. And what you need to hear is free to fee is one of the worst ways to start your business. It starts you in the wrong mindset. It avoids an early challenge that you really should be facing. It attracts the wrong clients. It wastes your time and your resources and it delays income that could have been there sooner and you really need it. Those who are in the pro free to feed camp are going to jump on this and point out that there are lots of industries and photographers out there that do free to feed and do very well for themselves. In fact, Jonathan, they may even do better than you do. While that may be true in some cases, that is something called the survivorship fallacy, which according to Wikipedia is the logical error of concentrating on the people or things that made it past some selection process and overlooking those that did did not. Yes, I am aware that there are companies out there that use free to fee and are doing fine, but I also know lots of businesses that have failed with the free to fee strategy, and I see endless comments and topics and forums of disaster after disaster when new photographers or videographers have tried free to fee and it has gone horribly wrong for them. And the truth is, even when it goes right, it's still not that good. I've seen the free to fee strategy introduced, and they say that for every 10 or 20 real Realtors you approach, you'll get a certain number of free shoots and one of those shoots will become a paying client. Once you have that ratio, all you have to do is rinse and repeat it indefinitely for unlimited clients. Sounds great, right? It certainly does if you have never tried any other strategy before. I don't offer free shoots, I never have, ever, and I can tell you my closing ratio is much better than one or two out of 20. I have a higher rate of success, not because I'm established professional, it's always been this way, but because good clients aren't as worried about the prices as much as you are. Offering the shoot for free is a red flag for good clients. You could offer 100 people free shoots, go out and shoot 20 or 30 homes for free, and get a small number of paying clients out of that. Or you could reach out to those same 100 clients, charge them your full rates, get 20 or 30 paid shoots or more for a few hundred dollars a pop with better results long term. You see what I'm saying here? Yes, free to fee doesn't not work. It just works really slowly and inefficiently and costs you a lot of time and money compared to other strategies. It's like sailing across an ocean when you could just take a plane. It doesn't make sense unless you just really love shooting for free. All right, so you may agree with the concept, but you say there are real situations in reality where people just need to do free to fee. For example, Jonathan, how am I supposed to charge for real estate if I don't even have a portfolio? Believe it or not, real estate agents don't care about your portfolio as much as you do. This might be a shocker to you, but remember, some of these agents are willing to shoot their listings on a cell phone. Your portfolio doesn't have to look as impressive as someone who has been doing this for years. In fact, I would say the only portfolio you need is one shoot shoot, just one shoot that is somewhat related to real estate. In fact, it could even be a wedding. People think wedding photographers can do anything just as long as whatever you show them looks good. If you want to shoot a house, you could even shoot your own house. They don't have to know it's your house. Go ahead and prep it, shoot it. They won't know the difference. And they probably won't even ask you to see more than one home. They just need to make sure you don't suck. In fact, I get calls for real estate all the time and they ask me a bunch of questions about price or something else that is clearly available on my website. And then it occurs to me, have you taken a moment to look at my website or seen any of my work? Nine times out of 10, the answer is no. Listen, photographers, I have a great portfolio and realtors don't even look at it. All they do lots of times Times is search for a real estate photographer on Google and call the first number they see, or they pick a photographer off a list of vendors at their brokerage. They don't necessarily even look at your photos before hiring you. I know that sounds crazy, but this is real estate. I wanna go ahead and take a second to let that sink in for a moment because this type of thing is very common and is extremely telling of the industry. There are things that are a lot more important than your photos when it comes to real estate photography. The point 
point is your portfolio really doesn't matter as much as you think. Don't use it as an excuse to shoot for free. Moving on, some might say that they get a bunch of attention for their business by doing free to fee. As I've already said, you probably don't get any more attention than you would if you just charged. There's nothing like being a new face in the market, so don't underestimate that. More importantly, if you offer free to fee, you may get a lot of attention, but it's not the kind of attention you want. As I have learned in every single industry I have worked in, the lower the price you offer, the worse type of client you attract. Believe me, you don't want bottom feeder agents using you or recommending you to their bottom feeder friends. If you charge money, those type of clients won't bother with you. This is a good thing, not a bad thing. When you start out charging money, even if you attract less clients, you will only be attracting good clients from the start. The kind of clients who respect you and pay you money. This brings up another good point, which is offering free to fee will make you feel like you're making a bunch of progress because you're doing all these shoots for free. But the reality in the business world is unless you're being paid for what you're doing, you're just burning your own resources. And whether we like to admit it or not, we don't have an infinite amount of time, energy, and resources. Doing free to fee can easily contribute to burnout and is not good for the longevity of your career. Especially after you get invested in someone, after doing a few free projects for them, and then all of a sudden they drop you when you try to charge can be extremely discouraging. Don't do that to yourself. By the way, if your free to fee client does end up hiring you long term, it will be very hard to have leverage with that client. This type of strategy not only attracts the bad clients, it can also bring out the worst in the good clients. Don't be surprised if they are ungrateful or even rude to you when you start charging them fairly. Don't expect them to understand why you can't just throw the drone up real quick and get them a few shots for free. After all, you're getting paid to do the other photos. You should be thankful, shouldn't you? I mean, in their mind, they're doing you a favor by hiring you at all. You owe them. If they get in this type of mentality, good luck getting them out of it. All of this could be avoided if you just charge to begin with. Another way free to fee doesn't do you any favors is making it seem like there is more demand in an industry than there actually is. If you are in a market that has an oversupply of capable photographers, which is unlikely, that aren't willing to pay you fairly for your value, then free to fee will lead you into the wrong industry and give you false hope, causing you to stay in an industry for months or years that never had any promise to begin with. And if we're going to be completely honest here, one of the main reasons people like free to fee is because the new photographers feel like like they're going to undercut the big boys and steal some of their business. The truth is, big guys like me aren't hurt by free to fee competition. We compete with free every day because lots of brokerages out there have photographers on staff. We learned long ago how to keep our clients and also sell new clients on our pricing even if you offer work for free. The only people you are hurting is yourself now and yourself in the future when you try to raise your prices with entitled, spoiled clients clients. If you don't believe me, that's fine. Perhaps you'll ignore me and learn this the hard way, but I'd really like to help you avoid that. You know, I have been in the industry for a while, in fact, longer than you might realize. Do not take me for a giver of poor advice and disappointing content. I'm not trying to rob you. I'm trying to help you. In fact, fellow photographers, if we can have a moment of honesty with ourselves, let's get down to the real reason people want to do free to fee so badly. The real reason is running a business is scary. And one of the most scary parts of that is approaching clients with a price and getting rejected. That hurts. That hurts real bad. And it casts all sorts of doubt on your hopes and on your dreams. But do not worry. This is the first step in your long journey of success, and there will be lots of hard times on the road ahead. It is best to gather the courage now and start out on the right path before it's too late. So charge for your services from the beginning. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't forget to use the search feature in the Facebook group and tag me if you can't find the answer. I'll be happy to answer your questions and always remember to learn, apply, and succeed.